If you need to rely upon only one valve to remain consistently operational in your home, it would certainly be your main stop valve, usually located where the main water supply enters the building and controls flow to every water line and ultimately every plumbing fixture in your building. The last thing you want to find out during a spontaneous emergency leak is that your main stop valve has decided to stop stopping. Hi, my name is Frank. Welcome to Plumbing School. And this is how to replace your crusty old main stop valve before a plumbing emergency happens. The procedures for this video apply specifically to a copper-fed municipal water system and not a well system, which is controlled via a dedicated switch and pump. If you have a water meter just after your stop valve, then you're on a municipal water system. The main difference being that you pay for your water on a per usage basis to have the township deliver the treated water to you. And you will therefore require coordination with your local city or township waterworks department to locate and shut off your main curb stop situated somewhere outside your house. For materials, you're going to need, most importantly, a new replacement stop valve that matches the same nominal pipe size as your existing valve. This is likely a minimum size of three quarter inch nominal pipe size, usually mandated by building code, but some older homes could be equipped with only half inch or even inch and a quarter or more for slightly bigger homes, like this one. Okay, okay, maybe not that big. When choosing a valve, I highly recommend a good quality full port ball valve, which will allow you to easily and fully control the flow of water by pivoting the handle across a mere quarter turn rotation. And they're so much better than the cheap traditional globe valves in every imaginable way. Full port means that the inside diameter of the valve is at least the same diameter of the connecting pipe, thereby allowing maximum flow volume. Regardless of your choice of valve, your main stop valve will also need to have an integral drain port to allow you the opportunity to completely drain the water from your system when servicing without compromising the tamper seal on your water meter. It's also a good idea to have on hand several inches of new copper pressure piping, preferably at least type L in thickness, and pressure fittings of the same diameter as the pipe, namely couplings and 90 and 45 degree elbows. Just in case you need to make slight modifications to the existing piping to allow for installation of the new valve. The good news is that valve bodies amongst diverse valves are usually the same length and therefore can be easily swapped without any modifications to the pipe. Be sure to double check before commencing the work. Obviously, you also need some soldering skills, which is a topic for another video. Presuming you already know how to solder, you're going to need the following equipment. A gas soldering torch kit, propane or MAP gas will suffice. This kit should include at least the following. Solder that does not contain lead, very important for health reasons and usually mandated by plumbing code. Acid paste or flux with applicator brush for allowing the solder to stick to the copper surfaces. Abrasives for cleaning the copper materials such as a wire brush and grit cloth. And a handful of clean rags for wiping your joints clean after soldering. Be sure to also have a fire extinguisher or full bucket of water within arm's reach just to stay safe in case your soldering venture doesn't exactly go as planned. You may also need a wet and dry vacuum to suck out all the residual water from the lines, otherwise the slightest trickle of water will cool your pipe and prevent you from soldering. Highly recommended, as it will save you a world of frustration. A small bucket or container to catch the residual water when draining the system, place and not included and an assortment of general hand tools, including no less than at least one pair of pliers and a small adjustable open end wrench. You may also want access to a copper pipe cutter and reaming tool in the event you need to modify the existing piping as mentioned earlier. Before you can begin this project, you'll need to contact your local municipal waterworks department at least a week ahead of time to coordinate an appointment for a complete water shutdown to the building so that you'll be able to replace the valve without flooding your surroundings. Ever notice that funny looking round steel disc sometimes protruding through your driveway asphalt or finely curated lawn? That's called a curb stop. And that's where your friendly neighborhood public works department will be shutting down your building's water supply so you can carry out your work. The curb stop is usually installed somewhere along your property line and belongs to the municipality and something you're not usually legally allowed to access. The municipality shuts off your water using a specialized long tool called a water key that's inserted through the disc's opening 
so they can access a stop valve that's buried several feet below your area's frost line, so your water line doesn't freeze in the winter. Obviously, this only applies to regions subject to bitter freezing winters, like we have here in Ontario, and pretty much everywhere else in Canada. Ah, oh, I miss Christmas in Florida. Note that every municipality is different. Some may charge you a hefty fee for turning the water both on and off, as if you had a choice, while other regions don't charge anything for the shutdown. So with the water finally off at the curb stop outside the building, let's get to work. But let's first briefly discuss the configuration of your water meter and main stop valve so you have a better understanding of what you're up against. Your municipality doesn't want you to consume any water which comes in before the meter, which would effectively mean you'd be getting free water. But because your valve is before the meter, you're allowed the luxury of a teensy weensy drain port so that you can drain the system if necessary, but without it being big enough to allow you to steal water through the port so that you could fill up your Olympic sized swimming pool at no cost to you. This is also why your water meter is tagged and sealed using a special tag and wire, or at least it should be. Generally, you're not allowed to cut that wire seal. Note, however, that your water meter is connected at the unions using flimsy rubber washers like those found in a garden hose, which can melt if too much heat is applied nearby. So if your soldering work is located frighteningly close to the meter's union connections, there are two things you can do. You can wrap a water-soaked rag generously around the union connection, which will help absorb any heat transferred from any adjacent pipe you're soldering nearby. Doing so will help prevent your water meter gasket from melting. Or you can cut the wire seal, which will allow you to remove the rubber washer near where you're soldering if you find it too close for comfort. But you must contact your water meter department immediately following the work to explain the situation, to have someone come by to have your meter resealed so you don't get accused of water thievery in the future. Okay, with that out of the way, let's really get to work. Begin by temporarily uninstalling or disabling any local smoke detectors in the work area, which may be set off by your soldering. If the system is monitored, be sure to call your monitoring center to place it on temporary bypass to avoid a not so friendly and expensive visit from your local fire department as a result of a false alarm. Most importantly, be sure to replace or reactivate the system once all work is complete. Commence draining your water lines by opening up all your plumbing fixtures in the building and on each level to allow as much water as possible to drain out via gravity and to confirm that the water is definitely completely turned off at the curb. Once gravity draining has seized or slowed, remove the existing valve's drain port cover and capture any residual water escaping from the drain port. Then proceed to vacuum out as much water from the drain port until there's no more water coming out. Prior to uninstalling the existing valve, ensure that the downstream water meter, which is relatively heavy, is sufficiently supported to ensure that no stress is placed onto any adjoining pipes or fittings in case the meter was shoddily installed, as is too often the case. Fire up your torch and begin by sweating off the downstream or higher side of the valve. Don't bother yet with the upstream side, as it's still full of water, which will prevent the solder joint from melting and detaching. Once the valve's upper connection is heated thoroughly, gently tapping or pulling upward on the adjacent pipe with your pliers should free it from the valve. Then proceed to heat up the upstream or bottom side of the valve at, or even better, slightly below the joint's connection. This will heat up any residual water and cause it to evaporate and spittle out. Be cautious around this expelled water, which is hotter than boiling point and will burn you if you come into contact with it. Once all the water has evaporated and allowed the joint solder to melt, tug and twist the valve off and set it aside away from you on a heat resistant surface such as a concrete floor or tiling to allow it to safely cool for handling later. Proceed to reheat the two exposed joints and carefully wipe off any excess or beaded solder which may prevent you from sliding on the new valve. Once the joints are cooled enough to touch, shine up the joints with grit cloth or sand cloth.
Take your shiny new valve and be sure to remove the drain port cap, which has a rubber seal that is subject to melting when the valve is being soldered. Also remove the handle, which has plastic material that's subject to melting when heated. And also to access the valve's packing nut after the valve has been installed. Here we're using a 5 16 nut driver to remove the handle's holding bolt. It's important that when installing the new valve, the drain port is installed on the downstream or top side so that when the valve is off, the building's water is draining through the drain port and not that of the municipal water system. Many valves, even the cheap ones, have arrows indicating the direction of water flow to assist with proper installation. Prep the inside surfaces of the new valve using a properly sized fitting brush or even a grit cloth if your fingers are tiny enough. Proceed to thoroughly apply ample solder paste or flux to the inner and outer surfaces of the valve and pipe joints respectively. Install the new valve into the pipe, again ensuring that the drain port is on the top or downstream side of the valve and that the port and handle are both accessible and have clearance for usage. Also make sure that the valve is in the open position to allow heated air pressure to escape while soldering so that the solder will get sucked into the joint properly. You can ensure this by temporarily replacing the valve handle. If the handle is parallel to the pipe or runs in the same direction, then the valve is open, which is what you want. Proceed to fully insert the other end of the pipe into the valve and fire up that torch for one last time. Hopefully. I like to start from the bottom and work my way upwards. Because the existing piping was previously tinned with solder, it should be even easier for the adjoining materials to connect, as the joints will require only minimal solder once the brass is adequately heated. Notice that I'm applying heat to the thickest part of the joint where the materials overlap. There's no need to apply any heat to the valve's body and any excess heat may actually damage the valve's internal components. If you start to see pooling or dripping of solder, you'll know that the joint is filled. Once you've allowed the valve to cool for a minute or so, wipe your joints clean and proceed to tighten the valve's packing nut using an adjustable open-end wrench. Don't skip this step. As wonderful as these ball valves are, the packing does loosen up after it's been subject to the intense heat of a torch, causing a loose swinging handle and dripping from the stem if it's not retightened. Replace the handle and respective bolt and test the on and off positions for proper feel and operation. If it feels too loose, you may need to tighten the packing nut a little more. You can still leave the drain port cap off while the valve is still toasty warm. Ensure that the valve is in the off position or perpendicular to the pipe and notify the public works technician, who's hopefully still waiting outside for further instructions from you, that they can proceed to carefully but slowly turn the water back on. This is the part where you anxiously run inside as quickly as you can to ensure that the basement is not flooding as a result of a poor joint connection. Presuming there was no flood, I'll slightly crack open the valve upon which you should hear water flowing through it and see some water escape through the drain port. This will also quickly cool the valve, allowing you to replace the drain port cap without damaging the internal rubber. Then turn the valve back off. Install the drain port cap, which you will only hand tighten snugly. Do not use pliers for the cap. You should be able to remove it by hand. Double check your joints and adjacent connections for anything fishy before fully turning on your shiny new main stop valve. Slowly turn on the valve and only partially to allow the building's water lines to fill in a controlled fashion and to allow trapped air to make its way upward and out through the open fixtures. Once the system is filled and flow has seized, fully open the valve and you are done. And so that's what it takes to replace your stop valve if you're on a municipal water system. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you'd be doing me a great favor if you make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and it'll let me know that you're interested in what I'm showing you. Or if there's something in particular you want to see, please do make sure to leave your comments in the section below or contact me directly, and I'll do my best to make it happen. Meanwhile, I thank you again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time.